Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to the AI for Good Global Summit, all year, always online. I'm Charlotte Kahn presenting AI for Good Perspectives. Like most of the world, the AI for Good Global Summit has gone digital with weekly online programming allowing us to reach even more people in 2020. AI for Good Perspectives offer expert insights, global visions, and shared solutions from the AI for Good community. In this perspectives demo, we hear some of the team from Capgemini and the Paris Regional Health Authority, as they describe how they developed an artificial intelligence bed occupancy prediction software tool called SEP in response to the COVID-19 health crisis and for the long-term efficiency of health services. STEP is one of the best tools to achieve one of the most important goals of this agency, to develop a triptych with transparency, predictability and anticipation for the global health system in this region. We are very proud to lead this project together with our very foresighted partners from the IRS. The STEP project is a very interesting... It's the perfect example of the value to bridge, to mix, experts coming from various ecosystems. Everyone came from a different background, with a different logic from doctors, epidemiologists, data experts. From data science, epidemiology, hospital management, together with clinicians. Technology, artificial intelligence, that together enable complex decision-making in a timing compatible with the emergency of crisis management. To put in the light of the day this innovative approach that aims at predicting hospitals' needs and resources to improve patient care. Two or three years ago, we had already thought about adding a support tool to the regional health project which would be able to anticipate scheduled care and monitor what we call the tension on the health system. This tension comes from a permanent conflict between scheduled elective patients and unscheduled emergency admissions. As we already had this idea, COVID-19 effectively enabled us to start this great story which we embarked on a few months ago. The impact of the COVID-19 epidemic has been extremely high in the Ile-de-France region. During March and April, the hospitals were saturated to a worrying extent. Very quickly, we asked ourselves how we could best approach the problem of occupancy and saturation of hospital beds in Ile-de-France, be it in the case of conventional hospitalization or in the intensive care unit. The tool was created by trying to identify how we could quantify and forecast future scheduled and unscheduled bed occupancy in the short and medium term. Based on historical data about volumes of unscheduled and scheduled patients, adding in a forecast for bed occupancy by COVID-19 patients, which provided a snapshot of the current bed occupancy situation and also what it could be in the future, taking into account these three elements. Working with COVID data basically means working with crisis data produced by doctors. Sometimes this data will suffer from uh, some noise or some errors. This has been a huge task to first correct the data and put them up to standards to be used in a complex algorithm. Here we are at the first page, which enables us to establish a diagnostic snapshot of the record of bed occupancy rates in the Ile-de-France region within three macro wards which are the existing intensive care unit, the extended ICU and the conventional ward. On today's date and for the next fortnight, with percentages and colour coding which reflect bed occupancy on that date. This can be a snapshot at the level of the région or of the département.
The STEP tool is also intended for use beyond the COVID epidemic. It came into being during that period, but it can of course be used to follow and monitor both day-to-day -day and critical aspects and tensions within the Ile de France Health Service. This element is accessed via this crisis button, which brings up COVID-19 indicators illustrating the evolution of the pandemic. Thus, we can see the curve of the pandemic's evolution in Ile-de-France with projections based on predictions of the spread of the virus in the region and different scenarios for incoming flows to regional hospitals. The second function is the control tower function. The real strength of this tool is the ability to simulate everything. This page is essential, with the option once again of different levels of analysis, at regional level to check equality of access to health care across the region, but also at the département level within the region. With this tool, we can simulate the changes to virus transmission rates within the population. At present, we are at a transmission rate of approximately 1.4, and I can simulate 1.6, for instance, and with the simulation button, see the same table that you saw earlier with changes to bed occupancy rates and requirements. The tool is designed to work with various epidemiological models devised by different public health bodies, such as the Pasteur Institute and the School of Advanced Studies in Public Health, with the potential to integrate other models from other organizations. We can therefore choose the scenarios and we can also modify the details of the care available, for instance by changing the number of beds available. If I want to show a number of additional beds in ICU, I can do it and modify the occupancy rates accordingly. Uh, eh ben je peux simuler uh, ce, ce besoin là et donc vous voyez du coup modifier ce besoin ce taux d'occupation qui est uh, qui est fait. But of course, we cannot treat the hospital as an only covid hospital. So we decided to model the whole uh, hospital activity, planned activity like cares for chronic disease for example or unplanned activity uh, such as ER activity or traumas. The same applies to conventional hospitalization. I can modify the number of beds needed to reach a satisfactory rate of occupancy. Both planned and unplanned activities are actually very predictable, so integrating them was a way for, the, for users to measure the impact of freeing beds whenever possible. In the same way, we can modify the scheduled activity by cancelling some treatments for non-urgent conditions. In March and April, we also used an evacuation plan in some areas of the region, by train or by air, because of lack of intensive care capacity. And so we can also hypothesize for this. We model patient pathways to be able to predict the number of occupied beds in the hospital Words. And we decided to model this within the Markovian framework, a state-of-the-art framework to model dynamical system. It's a novel method of looking at patient flows, which helps us think about the organization and the capacities required in the region. If we take an example such as strokes, we could perhaps predict the bed needs for this condition and particularly the intensive care requirements to best support these patients. If we look in greater detail at the pathways analysis, the Sankey diagram models the care pathways in a very visual way, but they can also be interpreted by what we call transition matrices, which help us determine during a patient's stay and for a given condition the probable route from ward to ward once they enter the hospital. 
et finalement de réguler l'offre. Adjusting the specific care available for each medical condition in each region, which might be under or over resourced for a specific treatment. En offre de soins spécifiques. This was a um, great demonstration of the value that data can bring, not only in case of crisis. STEP is an amazing and ambitious project allowing data scientists like me to have a positive social impact. I'm the head of the emergency department in De La Fontaine Hospital in saint denis near Paris. My field of research is emergency activity forecast. I'm very proud and very excited about the results and the predictions we've achieved to display on this tool. And I'm sure it will help hospitals and doctors to find the best way to manage patient stays. Hospital resources are allocated just to the right level, providing the right efforts so that our doctors and nurses can save energy and possibly lives. In the end, we have come up with a tool for use by both professionals and health decision makers to give an insight into the future and flexibility to the health system. Out of these joint efforts, we managed to delineate very actionable drivers for policy making. Implementation in the real world of hospitalization forecast will help us to find solution to emergency overcrowding. This is one of the main problems in our departments worldwide. By predicting bed needs and hospital saturation, I hope STEP could contribute to better manage healthcare resources. STEP is as well the illustration of multidisciplinary initiative that we should be able to replicate much more often at the national scale when it comes to priority health policy and complex decision making. That was the team from Capgemini in Paris describing how they use artificial intelligence to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. Stay tuned for more from the AI for Good Global Summit all year, always online. <laughs>